Okay, now before we start installing our database server and begin the actual installation of SCOM, we're gonna to have to create some service accounts for our application to use. Now for this video, we're gonna create five accounts. Now before we get started with creating these accounts, I will say this up front. None of them require domain admin privileges. Now some of them will require local administrator rights on the servers they'll be used for, but that's it. Now often when I've visited clients to check on their SCOM environments, I see SCOM accounts having domain admin rights and it's definitely not required. So less rights is better from a security perspective. Now if you are interested in finding out what permissions you really need, useful if you're working in a lockdown environment, have a look at this page here from Kevin Holman and if we scroll down we'll see he's got this account matrix Excel spreadsheet and it'll give you the information you require. So for two of our SCOM accounts, we'll need to grant them local admin rights on our SCOM servers, and those are our management server action account and the SCOM data access service account, which some of you might refer to as the SDK account if you've worked with older versions of SCOM. Now there's another couple of accounts we'll need to create, one for our data warehouse, and when we install that component, the setup wizard will grant it the necessary permissions, so that's something we don't have to do ourselves. But for this video, we're just gonna create the accounts. Now because I like to do things using PowerShell, uh, I'll show you a quick PowerShell script that we'll use to create an OU and Active Directory, and then create the accounts we need. But first, let's go and create one account, at least the old-fashioned way, just so you can see how to do it. So let's close this or minimize that. And here in our server manager, over on the right, we're going to click Tools. And then we're going to open up Active Directory Users and Computers. And let's just expand this to make it a bit easier to see. Now over on the left here, I'll select my domain, column.local. And firstly, I'm going to create a new OU to store my accounts in. Now, that step is completely optional. It's up to you how or where you're going to store your AD accounts for SCOM. Since this is just a lab, I'm going to right click here on my domain and I'm going to create a new organizational unit, which I'm just going to call SCOM. And we'll click OK. And there's our new OU. So inside this OU, we're going to create our service accounts. So here I'm going to right click. We are going to choose new user. And the first account we're going to create is the management server action account. So the name of this could be anything you like, but obviously I like to use a, a naming convention. So I'm going to say s dash because I like to do that for service accounts. s dash scom aa for scom action account. And for our user logon name, I'm going to enter the same name, s dash scom aa. And we'll click next. Now we'll need to enter in our password that we're going to supply in this account. And of course twice to confirm we did spell it correctly. And finally, we're going to uncheck this box, uh, user must change password at next logon, and we'll set this to password never expires. Now remember, this is a service account. We don't want the password expiring and the account being locked because users won't be actively logging on using this account. So we're done, we'll click next, and then finish, and there's our account. Now all we have to do now is repeat this process for the remaining accounts. But like I said, let's do it using Windows PowerShell. So firstly, let's delete this OU that we just created. Now, because Active Directory defaults to protecting objects from accidental deletion, if we actually try and delete this, say yes, we're told we don't have sufficient privileges or the object is obviously protected. So in order to allow us to delete this, let's go over to our action menu, excuse me, our view menu, and we'll choose advanced features. Now we'll right click again on our SCOM OU and we'll choose properties. Now we'll select the object tab and here we can now uncheck this box to protect this object from accidental deletion and click OK. And this time if we right click and choose delete, it will warn us in a moment when we click yes that there are objects inside that OU, but if we want to delete them, we just say yes. Okay, and it's gone. All right, now onto our script. So here's our script that's gonna help us create our accounts in AD. So let's take a quick look at what it does. So the first line is going to create an OU called SCOM, just like we did manually a moment ago. 
I've got a couple of variables at the top here, which you can clearly see is the name of the domain we installed in a previous video, column.local. So what I've tried to do to make this script a little bit easier to follow for people who aren't quite familiar with PowerShell is to have the account name listed at the top here, the first one being the action account we just manually created a moment ago. It's going to live in this variable, this OU, which is obviously going to be our SCOMAU we're just creating at the top here. Now I've also hard-coded my password into this script because it is just a lab. You can see that listed up here. But you might not choose to do this in your production environment. You can omit it if you prefer and enter in the password at the PowerShell console. So this account once created will be enabled. The password will be set to never expire. And there's a description as well. So scrolling down, you'll see we're also going to create our DAS account. We're going to create our data warehouse reader account and our data warehouse writer account too. And a little bit further down, there is a SQL service account as well. Now, finally, right down the bottom, what we're going to be doing is also creating a SCOM administrators group inside our SCOM OU. And we're going to add both the SCOM action account and the DAS account as members of that group. And this is cool because then we'll be able to add this group to the local administrators group on our SCOM management servers when we build those in a couple of videos. Too easy, hey? All right, so we could simply copy and paste this into a PowerShell prompt. So let's do that. All right, and a few seconds later, it's done. How quick was that? So let's go back to Active Directory Users and Computers and refresh it. There's our SCOM OU. Let's click it. And here you can see there's all our accounts nicely populated along with a description of what each one does. And if we double click on any of them, it doesn't really matter which one. We'll go to the Account tab. You'll see here our password set to never expire, which is what we want. And if we go to the Telephones tab, you'll see we've just got a note about who created this account and when. All right, so let's close this and open up this SCOM administrators group and go to the Members tab. And we should see our two accounts in here. Now, obviously, this is just a lab, so you might prefer to call yours SCOM service accounts or something like that and have your actual SCOM administrators in a different group. But for me personally, I'm just going to create this one group here, add my own AD account into this group, and that'll grant me admin access to SCOM when we install it shortly. Okay, so whether you need to do it manually or use a script like I've just done, we've got the accounts we need. So at this point, we're ready to install our database, which we'll do in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'd like to thank you for watching.